subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Vintage auto collector Ashok Lindo has been nursing his babies for almost 20 years now. They're precious and he says it has all been possible because of a dedicated crew at work. The team has restored at least 15 cars so far. Here at Lashumir Shillong, you have the best collection of vintage automobiles. Mr. Ashok Lingdo is the man behind these well-kept beauties that you see here. The symbol of history showcasing the glory of an era. And his obsession can actually be your good fortune because some of these retro cars are now available on rent. Let's meet Ba Ashok. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So we are here today to meet your babies. Do you call them your babies, yes? yes they are. They, it's, it's almost like giving birth to them because when they come to me, they wreck you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first time when we get the engines to start after 20 years or 30 years, it actually sounds like a baby's first cry. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so they, I consider them as, as my babies. And, and my crew that I have here, they, 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 they understand that perfectly. And they also love these cars. We'll meet your crew soon, but uh, would you also introduce us to some of them, yeah, sir? Definitely. This is an Opel Record 1965. It's a German car. Mm -hmm. uh, then the next car that you see over here is a Studebaker Champion 1955. Okay. And uh, this is a Morris Minor uh -huh. 1952. This is, you can call it the grandfather of the ambassador oh, that, yeah, that, we, that we were so fond of and we used for so many years. All right, sir. This is a Plymouth uh, Plaza 1954, okay. uh, six cylinder. Uh -huh. And over there we've got a uh, CJ3B left hand right Willis. That's the famous Willis? Yes. Uh, the car over here, we, 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 we took about two years or so to restore this. Mm -hmm. There's another restoration here, which is in a mess. This is a CJ5 again. Okay. Uh, these came into India during the Bangladesh war. They came in for the relief and rehabilitation work for refugees that had come from across the border. We are doing mechanical work here. This is the old car. And it's been about 15 years. 15 years? Yes. Which car did you make here now? This is all the cars we make. Okay. So what do you have to do for it? What do you have to do for it? उसको सामान मिल जाता तो सामान लगा देते हैं यानी तो कुछ बना के लगाते हैं और ये सारा जो पीछे अभी अभी जो एक गाड़ी बनाए हैं इसमें करीब करीब तीन साल लग गया होगा बनाने में तीन साल लग गया अच्छा और देखभाल कैसे कितनी जरूरी है देखभाल तो सारे के सारे डेली हम करते हैं हो जाते हैं रोज सब कुछ चेक करते हैं किसी में पानी किसी में मोबाइल किसी में हवा कम हो गया तो हवा हवा देते हैं उन्हें सब गाड़ी हमेशा ओके रहता है दिस इज माय फर्स्ट बॉन दिस इज फोर्ड जीपीडब्ल्यू फ्रॉम 1943 दिस जीप्स वर यूज्ड ड्यूरिंग द वॉर आई हैव केप्ट इट एब्सोल्युटली ओरिजिनल इवन द बैटरीज आर इन सिक्स वोल्ट दे नॉट इन ट्वेल्व वोल्ट यू कैन बाय सिक्स वोल्ट बैटरीज for the car, for the Jeep. And uh, this Jeep actually was very, very uh, uh, important for the opening up of the Northeast. Because as you know, in the 40s and 50s, we hardly had any proper roads in the Northeast. Uh, we just had about a road from Guwahati to, to Shillong. And beyond that, you know, to even go to a place like Jawai, there was no road. And so uh, these Jeeps were like the horses, you know that you actually saw in these Western movies where uh, they say you know, it was the horse that won the West. You know? uh, here it was the Jeep that won the Northeast because uh, these Jeeps made trails through the forests and through the hills. This is a gun rack. This was used, uh, you know, especially to house the rifle of the driver. This is a replica of an M1 carbine. These are jerry cans which again, you know, are very, very rare. Uh, these are not uh, modern jerry cans. These are from the war. 
these were water jerry cans, very different to the petrol ones which were used during the war. Uh, if you have a look, it's got a very wide mouth. You see, it's got a very wide mouth. Uh, because it carried water and it not just carried water, it used to carry stew. So you had a lot of meat stew, you know, so you had big pieces of meat and bones and things like that which the GIs would use. This is a Second World War water, water bottle that was used by the GIs, that's the American troops. No? You'll find the data plates here that specify the age and the chassis number, the engine number uh, of this Jeep. And uh, you look at the meters, they're all original, uh, 6 volt, um, that were used in these uh, Jeeps. And another very interesting thing that you might notice here are these two things that are sticking out. You see, because uh, during the war, they didn't want any direct light. They wanted diffuse light, because you see, if you have direct light, the enemy sees you. So the meters didn't have bulbs in them. So the bulbs were here. And if you notice, the slits here, you see at the bottom? So the light that came out was diffused. Among the classics, Mr. Lindor owns some of the most spectacular vehicles ever created. Some of these cars are also hired by locals for photo shoots, while at other times, he drives them around town, making heads turn wherever they go. Um, if you want to know where it all started, it all started with uh, this pedal car. Because uh, this is all Vauxhall uh, from the early 1930s and um, I used to enjoy pedaling cars like this in my childhood and perhaps that's how the interest uh, came in and um, as you can see there's a larger one here this is a Morris 8 uh, 1936 it's a Tora uh, she's about 84 years old today they painted in almost identical colors so it's a it's a very good uh, showcase of the transition from from you know from child to 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 man each of these vehicles hold a special place in his heart for mr ashok lindor and everyone who knows him each car is an extension of his self you know no two cars of the same mark are exactly the same they're very very different they have the personality of the owner stamped into them like my Jeep, for instance, is very different to, say, a Jeep owned by someone else because that reflects his personality. If he's not a perfectionist, the Jeep reflects it. And uh, you, you even find, you know, the engine sounds are very different, uh, very distinct. You know, say you have a Fiat coming up a hill or a Jeep coming up a hill. From a mile away, you knew what car it was. Unlike, you know, these uh, appliances that you have today. I don't even call them motor cars anymore. They're just appliances that you use and throw away every two, three years. And uh, the engines sound the same. They look the same. The, each one looks as ugly as the last one. So, you know, they, they have no personality at all. And uh, that is why, you know, I preserve these cars and these, these, these artifacts that I have. And what I'm most happy about is uh, people from my age group are not so interested and even the ones who are beyond me in years are not that interested. But I find the youth are very, very interested. They love coming here. And so it's almost like, you know, I'm a, uh, a custodian of the past. Yeah, you and, are a custodian, uh, yeah. but you must be spending so much to purchase these cars. Uh, not really. I, because the thing was, I, I picked these cars up as scrap. Because I, I don't like to buy a complete car. Because like I said, you see the car, has your personality stamped into it. So if I buy a complete car, it has the personality of the seller stamped on it. And he need not necessarily do a good job on it because he, his, his, his motive is profit. Mine is preservation, you see. Not just cars, a lot of antique items may be worth a fortune now, find place in his home. Vintage World War II collectibles, including vehicles and other military items, memorabilia from different parts of the world, are all carefully preserved here. What you see here is a BSA uh, M20. This is a BSA stands for Birmingham Small Arms. This is basically a 1941 uh, British Army motorcycle 
that was used in the Battle of Kohima. It's a survivor of the Battle of Kohima. And um, I came to know of it uh, almost uh, over 10 years ago. And uh, it was lying in bits and pieces. Uh, the, the, the entire motorcycle was in three, four gunny bags in Mokokcho. And so I kept trying and I kept trying, but the, the, the previous owner just wouldn't sell. And uh, it was his misfortune and my fortune that he, he, he had some financial problems. And then he finally sold it to me. And uh, this is very special because uh, the Battle of Kohima actually has been uh, described as one of the most significant battles ever. Uh, you know, earlier it was the Battle of uh, uh, Stalingrad and things like that, but this is, the Battle of Kohima in fact is of equal significance to the Battle of Stalingrad during the war. So I feel very fortunate in having this uh, and we restored it, runs perfectly well. Uh, spare parts now thankfully are not such a problem because uh, of the vintage market that you, that we have in India, they're remanufacturing a lot of these parts. So maintaining it now is not such a problem. And this is a sidecar for the for for the motorcycle. So when it, when they ride in tandem, it looks very very beautiful. People are free to walk into his home if they take a genuine interest in retro cars and collectibles. But Mr. Lindo says he has no plans to convert his space into a museum. I would rather have it informal like this way. You know, people just walk in people who have an interest in things like this and show them around rather than you know have a museum i find museums it's a very personal thing it's uh, probably not the opinion of most people but i find museums very impersonal uh, you know where you actually walk into a building and you find an artifact that has been locked up in a, in a cabinet i personally don't really like that too much i like living with it This is an old money bank from the 18, 1860s. This is from the for America's made of cast iron. Yeah, this uh, this this is an American thing which reeks of racism. I mean, it's not politically correct uh, anymore, uh, but nonetheless, it's a piece of history that we must uh, preserve. This is an old gramophone. It's a 78 RPM. In fact, uh, even the records that they use are <coughs> very, very different. Uh, they're very brittle and very, very hard. So you basically have one song per side, not like the 33 RPM that came later or the 45. So this is an old Gillette with the box from the 1940s. So it's still in mint condition, as you can see. There's no rust, no nothing at all. It's testament to the quality of products from those days, isn't it? So you'd open it up like that, put your blade in there, twist it again, and there you go, ready for your shape. Apart from cars, you have so many collectibles from, you know, an era gone by. And the pride of many a man has been safeguarded here. The families must be thanking you for keeping it so well. See, the thing is, I, I really don't know whether their families will be thanking me or not, but uh, I, 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 I know it from within because these are things which belong to people who are long dead now. And uh, rather than, you know, have them transformed into rods that, that you know, people build buildings with, uh, if I preserve them and if I uh, give them the due respect, um, I, I would think that the, the souls of those people would be happy. I mean, I, I would be happy if my things were looked after after I was dead and gone. Karishma Hasnath in Shillong, The Print.